day 13 for me of vlog mass to be honest and oh man I'm kind of glad that I took a little break because I was tired really tired yesterday I talk about me going to the venue uh, where my friend Nick introduced me to which I am so intensely grateful uh, first of all I actually gotta say they got a really cool brand uh, and I'm, I'm actually repping it right now uh, wearing their brand most I actually got a bunch more uh, t-shirts and uh, a sweat sweater uh, from uh, the most uh, aesthetics and it was so cool I also got a chance to check out the location and coolest thing ever I mean uh, obviously the setup is amazing so I I actually got like way more than I wanted uh, <laughs> like way more than I could possibly need to uh, you know I got the I got the stage I got the backdrop which is uh, that was like an added bonus uh, I got like tons of sockets all over the place so I can hook up all of my lights and there's still like plenty of space for me to just like set up mics and set up the camera and oh my god too too good too good but whenever I'm on camera I feel a little repressed but one I tend to fall back on my body language and I talk a little too fast and I rush things when I speak um, I never noticed that till they said it and then I got up on the stage and I asked one of them um, I said, Can you please stand behind the camera and just you know like uh, check check out what I do check out what I say and that's when uh, they, they actually make the notice like you're a little too uptight and then you're talking like you're trying to rush the message you know like you're trying to like get to the point way too fast and I I do do that I actually do talk like I want to just like you know get over it like get the message across real quick uh, I'm, I'm just it takes away from the experience of you know watching a good message on YouTube we were also talking about the changes in analytics uh, the way YouTube sees its analytics which now is a little bit weird uh, I used to think that it was based on watch time, then it changed to duration, then it changed to subscribers, now it's changed to what they call fame, which is based on the comments that you get in your, uh, on your videos, which I think is probably going to be one of the worst things that uh, can happen in terms of changes. Now I have to revert back to PewDiePie, that's actually amazing. Uh, I have to revert to this guy because he himself actually explained that in detail and I missed that part and you know I guess from an spectator perspective I don't have a I don't see that as a bad thing because again like I do see uh, content from YouTubers that I've never even heard of maybe it's outdated which is something he wrote up but it's like the fact is that the content that does pop out is content that is like way too outdated you know like me and and I stand from the standpoint of a creator, I do get um, hurt by like even if I'm a small little guy, like I do get hurt by that because um, now like people are relying on the old content instead of the new content to see how well I'm doing. It's gonna leave the most relevant content pretty much completely ignored, which in and in and of itself hurts viewership, hurts. Uh, subscribers and hurts uh, the entire purpose of the analytics. It's a little off-putting when you realize that you're trying to do your best, especially when, like me, like I'm starting out, like I'm starting, my, I'm starting to do my absolute best doing out all this content, and there's a good chance that you may never see another day because it gets ignored. You know, like what I found to be weird uh, was that. YouTube started this whole demonetization process, which was supposed to make like family-friendly content the thing that uh, was supposed to like dominate the platforms. And in the end, it just like it's getting completely ignored because um, I watched the entire PewDiePie um, like I don't want to call it rant anymore. It's more like a 
an actual observation on the changes on YouTube platform. And uh, the one thing that actually kind of caught me off guard was the fact that YouTube now is uh, like having porn display on the top section. You know, like I'm not saying that like probably that's not um, been out there at all ever. Um, I'm just saying that I never seen like a thumbnail of a porn site uh, like right out on display on the main page. That's what I'm saying. Never seen that until this happened recently. I call them like trick shot titles because it's like uh, you click on that and then it shows you a completely different video, like a completely different video that goes in a loop. Like I figured that's what it was, but it turns out like it's not. <laughs> I feel a little guilty, and I and I do feel responsible for the, the ranting I made towards uh, PewDiePie because I, I I went out basically like halfway in porn. Had to have acted with more information at hand, which I didn't do. That kind of sucks. I didn't do that, and I'm responsible for everything I said, and I do apologize. That was that is wrong. But at the end of his. Um, video he said that YouTube should not be surprised if you know like personalities that started leaving YouTube you know like, and the content creators started leaving YouTube and, I, and I'm kind of like hey I just joined this platform as a content creator I don't want to leave it in fact I'm actually liking I, I'm loving being in YouTube I don't want to go anywhere else really uh, I love the fact that I get to do this and I've taken some bold approaches that I've never done before, and I've gone from like not knowing how to use a camera at all to like knowing even how to set up a backdrop. You know, like how to properly use a backdrop. I've never done that. Like editing systems, softwares, and you know, like uh, thumbnail generations, things of the sort. I I never even had the stuff that I'm saying right now. I never knew existed. So. You know, I'm in a I'm in a position where like I I don't want to be here just long enough to see it end. YouTube is fun. I mean, like I've been to YouTube's place already. Like that place is fun and it's inspiring and it's motivating. If anything, it's like one of those things that like pushes you to want to do more. I enjoy the fact that uh, they have this thing that is the unlock the space program, which is based on the number of subscribers that you have. I believe that's one thing that you should do. Like, like reward content creators for the subscribers they get into your channel. Like you should base it off of that. Uh, you should base the ad revenue based on the ads that contact these content creators and say, "Hey, we want to run your like we want to run our ad in your channel. Like, can we do that? We'll pay you this much. Like, you should allow that kind of freedom. Uh, I mean, you, YouTube, should allow that kind of freedom or do you feel like you have to intervene? Uh, maybe YouTube can be like the middleman, so like, and the ad company can go like, "Hey, we're gonna put like this specific ad on this channel because their content relates to the ad that we have. So, can we do that? You know, can can you contact this content creator and give uh, give them the notice that we want to place our ad in their platform because we find that it will be beneficial for all parties involved." That's another thing you can do, and or here's another option: uh, both the content creator and the ad company uh, come together and agree that they're gonna, you know, like put an ad in the content creator's channel. And uh, because it's on a YouTube platform, YouTube takes a percentage of it because it's on the platform. It's like, oh, like we're gonna place this ad on my YouTube channel. Cool, great. Uh, I'll take a certain like a I don't know, like. Like a five percent, uh, like finder's fee or whatever. Just like I'll take five percent of whatever the ad makes on your channel because it's made on the because it's planted on the YouTube platform. Thereby, you know, YouTube gets a little piece of it. And simple as that. So like, there are simpler ways uh, for YouTube to make its money. Easier ways to allow content creators to. Uh, you know, monetize their channel, and there's easier ways for other 
companies to reach out to this to the content creators and you know uh, like given the opportunity to promote uh, their channel and promote the product as well like it doesn't have to be that complicated and I, I believe that right now there's like mix and matching like I believe YouTube is mix and matching uh, trying to find out like what makes what exactly but uh, I, I gotta be honest this comment thing is not gonna work 